So I'll indeed be talking about abstraction. More uh, precisely, I'll be speaking about approximate causal abstraction. Now the word causal should hopefully make a lot of sense to you already. So I'm gonna be focusing mostly on the words abs uh, abstraction and approximate. As you can see, this is joint work with Frederick Eberhardt and Joe Halpern. And some of you might have expected either one of those, so I'm sorry to disappoint you, I'm neither of those. Um, and obviously, I'll try to do my best to represent their views as accurately as possible, but anything stupid that I say is fully my own responsibility, not theirs. Now, I'll first try to motivate why we should care about approximate abstractions. And to motivate that, I'll have to explain a little bit at least the, the, the rough idea of what an abstraction is. Then I'll go through a running example just to give you a sense of what's going on and what the problem is. And I won't go into the technical details because that, well, that would take way too much time and it's also gonna bore you. Um, and kind of give you a sense of, of what the challenges are and also what the flexibility is of the framework. So we've not decided to go down a path where we specify a very specific interpretation of approximate abstraction. Rather, we went for having a framework which allows for many different choices to be made by the modeler as to what they consider to be the most important parameters for approximation. Now, all right, so why should we care about approximate causal abstraction? I'm going to assume that you're all here in this room, so you're already on board with the assumption that causal models matter. And if, and if you don't agree with that, I'm not gonna say anything which is probably gonna convince you otherwise. Now, the idea of abstraction, and particularly of abstraction of causal models, has gotten some attention recently um, and, in fact, at this conference, uh, Chalupka uh, has, has presented several papers where uh, they, they tried to, um, they presented work where they have a very detailed low-level system in terms of detailed, like, um, a large amount of variables, uh, so very difficult to parse and very difficult, and, and also containing a lot of redundant information and trying to make sense of how can we somehow abstract that into a higher level such that we have less variables, less different, a smaller state space, and still contain most of the interesting causal information that, we're, we, that we would like uh, to have. In particular, um, we use causal models to intervene. Sometimes we can only intervene on a very rough, in a very rough manner, and therefore we might not need variables which go beyond the, the details that your intervention allows. So this will become a little bit more precise later. Um, more recently, uh, Paul uh, Rubenstein and others have presented a paper also where they give a, a, um, um, a formalism which allows for two different causal models to be related to each other. So in particular, the setting is you have one causal model which describes a very detailed, low-level uh, causal interactions. And that's kind of the most accurate representation of reality there is. And it's accurate, but it's also very uh, complex and very inefficient to work with. Also, often you don't have access to that complexity or to, to that level of detail. So in many cases, what you would have is a higher level causal model, which is um, still describing the same system, but just has less, inform less information. And more recently, um, Joe and I presented work which extends uh, Paul's work, which also defines several notions of abstraction that, 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 that um, we consider to be useful and try to capture this idea of going to a higher level, um, and I'll make this precise by the illustration, by the example that I'll, that, I'll, that I'll come to next. In any case, if you're on board with the assumption that causal models matter and that abstractions matter, well, it's a, it's a quite a trivial observation to make that in reality, most of the abstractions that you will have will not be exact, in the sense that the high level model will not be an exact representation of the low level. Of course, it's not exact in the sense that you're losing information, but even beyond that, the, 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 the inferences that you will get will only approximately give you the outcomes that, that you'll see in reality. So there's an approximation going on there. Therefore, once you have abstraction, it's quite sensible that you wanna move on to approximate abs uh, um, abstraction. Here's a bunch of examples to give you kind of a sense of how broad this idea is. It's, it's all over science, you might even say. Most classical example is statistical mechanics can be abstracted into thermodynamics, right? So the behavior of molecules uh, and the kinetic energy of individual molecules can be described as uh, on high level by using variables like volume, temperature, and pressure. Um, another example, which you'll see in the next talk, is dynamical systems where you have a system evolving over time, and so you could have variables for each time point, but you could also be more interested in just the equilibrium stationary state at the end, and you could say that that's an abstraction as well of the, the evolving system. The last example here, that's the one that I'll be using, it's a, an example from climate, uh, climate science, 
So there's a weather phenomenon called El Nino or La Nina, that's, uh, those are related phenomena, and those are very influential actually. Now what, um, what, 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 what Kalupka and also Frederick did together was they got data regarding this phenomenon and it turned out that there's a causal relation between the wind speed at a particular area of the Pacific if, um, and the seed surface temperature in that same region. So this is very detailed data regarding a grid. I'll show you the example. So W represents the vector of wind speeds over a particular grid of the Pacific, and that has a, a causal influence on the temperature on that same grid. Now these are very detailed data, too much actually uh, to work with, whereas what we're interested in is somehow could we abstract this level of detail into a higher level such that we still have enough information to describe the weather phenomenon of El Nino, but have something that we can work with. And the variables C and E that you see, those are uh, in fact um, simplifications, abstractions of the lower level information that's captured by W, which is abstracted into C, and the, the information captured in T, which is abstracted into E. Now, let me move back a little bit to make precise what the elements are that we're going to need for such an abstraction. So we need a low-level causal model, ML, a high-level causal model, MH, and we also need some kind of function which captures how the state space of the low-level model so the state space referring just to purely to if the variables take on these values, how does that map onto the values of the variables on the high level? It doesn't say anything about the causal dynamics, it just says something about how the state spaces relate. And so we're assuming that that's already given. We have such a, a function, tau. And now the idea of an abstraction is how could we somehow extend this interpretation of tau so that we don't apply it just to the state space, we apply it to the entire causal model. Right? So we move up the entire model together with all this dynamics meaning together with the possibility of interventions to the high level. How could we make sense of that? That was a challenge. And if you see that as a challenge of um, defining the notion of abstraction, well, the challenge of defining an approximate abstraction is quite obviously, rather than going for an identi identity between the abstracted model and the high level. So the identity between an abstraction of the low level model and the high level model, an approximation between the two. And the paper basically tries to flesh out how that approximation, what, 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 um, how that should be quantified precisely. Now back to the example. So here, what are the elements that are required? On the low level, we have FL, which represents the causal influence of the wind on the, on the temperature. Um, U, those are all the other background causes that we're not going to be talking about, because of course, surely it's not just wind which determines the temperature, but it's A factor. And likewise, on the high level, we have a background um, variables u, and also you, you, well, what's required for an abstraction, you already have the function which maps the state space of the endogenous variables, you want to also extend that to the back to the exogenous variables. So you need to somehow get from this uh, function tau to a function tau u, which maps the exogenous variables to exogenous variables, but that's not all you need. For a causal model, what's also essential is the interventions. So you also want to be able to represent a low-level intervention. How does that map to a high-level intervention? So we need an additional function, which we call omega tau, and that's where a lot of the work goes in. And in fact, where do these additional functions come from? There's several options that you could go with. I, I refer to you to, to our earlier paper to, to see how that works. But what's crucial for this talk is none of those choices matter in the sense that our framework can deal with all of them. As long as you somehow have a way of deriving a mapping for interventions and a mapping for context from um, a mapping of the endogenous variables, whatever your choice was to do that, our framework can deal with it. Okay, so um, that's the example. Now, what does it mean to say that we have an approximate abstraction? Well, there's this, this diagram here and the idea is that on the left bottom, what you have there is a low-level context, right? So the background conditions in the low level and a low-level intervention on W. So you're setting the wind speeds to a particular uh, value. Now you could use those and plug those in to the low-level causal model. And it's an, we're assuming acyclicity, so that will give you a, new, a unique solution for the value of the temperature, right? So that's just all on the low level. That's a horizontal direction. It's purely causal, causal evolution. So plug in context, plug in intervention, you get a solution for the temperature. 
Now we have our abstraction function tau, which maps into um, values of the temperature onto our high level variable E. So if we do that, then we end up with the value E on the right here. Right? That's the result of going from the bottom and going up. But you might also have gotten to that, to that area by another route. You might have said, look, I'd start with the context. I move up the low level context to a high level context. I, m I also take my low level intervention. I move up to the high level intervention that represents this low level. And then you have two, then you have a high level setting which you can plug into the high level cause and model and see what that gives you for the variable E. That's gonna be E prime. Now, when is this successful in terms of MH being an approximate abstraction of ML? Well, since causal models are about predictions under interventions, what we'd like is that under these kind of interventions, the, the worst case distance between the two routes, namely between E and E prime, is not gonna be very large. Now, we went for worst case, that's a choice. You can make other choices. In that sense, the framework is flexible. But note that this is for deterministic causal models, meaning that for a particular context, uh, you have a unique solution. Now, what's more interesting is you go to the probabilistic case. A probabilistic causal model, essentially simply a deterministic model M plus a probability distribution over the background context, over the exogenous variables. And so this captures the uncertainty that you have that you might not know exactly in which context you're finding yourself. Um, now extending uh, to this case, we can have much more interesting notions of approximation. We could ask ourselves, well, um, one way of looking at it is the worst case expected distance that you might have. So you're going to look at all possible interventions that you can do, and you're gonna look at the worst case of those interventions uh, regarding the expected distance there will be between following the two routes going up to the, to the uh, right top corner there. And that's gonna be your notion of approximation. Whatever value you get there, that's how well it approximates. Or you might say, look, I don't really care that much about expectations, what I really care about is, I don't want the error ever to be very large. Like there's a certain threshold beta, and I really care about uh, um, reducing the probability that you'll ever cross that threshold. So you might have a different notion of approximation based on that. And as I said, there's other options which you could kind of plug into the formalism without um, any, any problems. Now there's one thing which I haven't mentioned yet, well there's lots of things I haven't mentioned yet, but one crucial thing, which is also interesting, the uncertainty doesn't arise purely out of our, our, our epistemic um, limitations regarding the context, that we just don't know everything about the context. There's also another source of uncertainty which has to do with you're actually implementing your interventions. So our interventions aren't just hypothetical uh, counterfactuals, we're also thinking about in a real system, you're gonna be doing them. And so you're gonna be implementing these interventions in some particular way. You're gonna have a button that you're gonna, gonna push, you're gonna have an instrument that you're gonna use, you're gonna give medicine to your patient. Those are the real interventions. And what's often gonna be the case is that those interventions will be on the high level. So you'll have influence over a high level variable, whereas in reality, the intervention is going to be instantiated on the low level, right? So let's say that we have a AC here, so you wanna increase the temperature of the room, so you're gonna press a button. That's a high level variable, which actually represents a whole different possible arrangements of um, the kinetic energy of molecules in the room. So there's many different low level interventions which are compatible with one single high level intervention. Now, given that in many cases, you might have knowledge about how that system works. Namely, you might know, look, if I'm gonna turn on the fan, surely, even though theoretically it's possible that there's gonna be molecules on this side of the room that are gonna be moving, although the fan is over there, in practice, you know, no, there, that's not gonna be the case. There's some probability distribution over um, all possible low-level interventions, which is gonna give you some information. So that, for example, if the fan's standing in that side of the room and you press it, then surely the molecules which are closest to the fan they're gonna be affected most. So that low level intervention is gonna be more likely than other interventions. And that information is also gonna be useful and you can take that into account into your approximation as well. Now just to give you kind of a sketch of the flexibility that I've been talking about. So if, as I've already mentioned, we can deal with deterministic or probabilistic causal models. There's also different notions of abstractions. Um, so, so several of those were, 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 were um, presented by, by, by Joe and myself, but others were represented by Paul Rubenstein. Um, now there's also a very interesting special case, which is what if you have two models which have the same signatures, i.e. they have the same variables, 
So you're not talking about different levels anymore, you're talking about the same level. Well, that's just a special case of an abstraction. And then you can have a notion of approximation between two causal models that's on the same level. And there has been some work on that, so there's a structural intervention distance, and in a sense you might say that our notion of approximation is kind of a much more detailed, um, detailed version of that. So it can, it can incorporate what's happening there, plus more. Um, for example, the structural intervention distance only speaks about interventions on single variables, while we also allow composite uh, interventions, right, on several variables at the same time. That, that's just one difference. Um, also, something that I haven't mentioned at all is, where does this distance come from? How do you, so I've, I've been using this approximation sign. Well, somehow you're gonna have to start out with, the, uh, with a metric on the high level state space. That's gonna be your starting metric, and you're gonna use that to define a distance function for the entire causal model. And obviously, the choice you're gonna be making there about a particular metric for your high level is gonna influence hugely how, how well an approximation you're gonna get. Now, we've been explicit or um, intentional in, in not choosing a particular choice, a particular metric on the high level, because that's gonna depend on the application. So in a sense, it's really uh, up to the modeler and the, the application that you're looking at, what kind of metric makes sense here? Because that depends on what are you interested in. And so, so that's left up to the modeler. Lastly, um, as I've also alluded to, there's different ways of, of focusing on abstraction. You could focus on the worst case, or on the expected case, or on a particular threshold. And those are kind of suggestions. The idea is not that in our paper we give an exhaustive list of all possibilities, but rather that once you've got the basic idea going, you can easily start adapting it. Um, so let me conclude. What essentially do we do? Well, we quantify how a high-level causal model approximates a more detailed low-level causal model of the same system. Also something which I did not go into at all is we give some interesting results regarding a composition. So you might wonder, given that you have a notion of abstraction which is exact, and you have also a notion of approximation, well, how about then an approximate abstraction just being a composition of an approximation and an abstraction? And we show kind of under what conditions indeed that's the case, and under what conditions an approximate abstraction cannot be decomposed in such a manner. Um, and further, we, we believe that the, the value of this work is that since causal models and abstractions matter a lot in science in many different fields, this framework offers a principled way kind of to assess the trade-off that you want to make between abstraction but also accuracy. Um, and that's it. I'm open to questions. <laughs>